In the world of off-camera flash modifiers, softboxes are the ones that you have to master if you want to take and make great portraits. That's why I'll be sharing five ways that I personally use softboxes that you can also use to improve your work. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Miguel Quiles. If you want to learn more about photography and learn new tricks to improve your portraits, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be updated on when my new videos post up. Today we're going to take a look at five setups using one of the most common light modifiers out there, softboxes. Softboxes are typically square or rectangular in shape and provide two layers of diffusion material to help soften the light coming from your flash. It's important to note that the larger these softboxes are in relation to your subject or the thing that you're photographing, the softer the transition from highlight to shadow. While there are many sizes of softboxes available out there for portraiture, I generally recommend medium to larger sizes to give you the most flexibility to flatter your subjects with gorgeous light. To demonstrate these five softbox setups, I'll be using the Westcott Rapid Box, who happen to be the sponsor for today's video. They provided me with two softboxes to demonstrate these setups for you, which are a two foot by three foot in size, as well as a larger three foot by four foot softbox. What makes these softboxes unique is that they are able to be modified to mount onto a variety of different types and brands of flashes. They set up quickly in a similar way to an umbrella, which makes them extra convenient to use. If you wanna learn more about these softboxes, I'll have a link for them along with all of the gear that I'll be using in this video in the description for you to check out. Let's get into it and look at the five setups. After each one, I'll show you some examples that I was able to get with each one. As requested in previous videos, I'll show you the raw photos that came straight out of camera as well as the color corrected version that was modified using the latest version of Capture One. These photos haven't been retouched so that you're able to get a better idea of what the lighting should look like before heavy post-production. If you wanna see what the final images look like, I'll share a link in the description of the video where you'll be able to see those if you're interested. The first setup that I often use is to have the light positioned at around 40 to 45 degrees from my subject with the softbox turned horizontally. Doing this allows the light to not only illuminate your subject, but will also wrap around them to add some light to your background if they're all close to one another. Generally speaking, you'll wanna try and position the light so that the bottom of the softbox is at around eye level. If you're using a larger softbox like the three by four foot softbox that I'm using here, you'll be able to use this setup to get beautiful light for headshots, three quarter length shots, and even full body shots if you pull the light back a few feet from your subject. Check out the beautiful soft light that you're able to get from this setup using only one light. This next setup is one of my personal favorites for lighting portraits and beauty images. Mm -hmm. To do this, you'll wanna make sure that you're using a larger size softbox. I begin by having my subject stand around a foot away from the backdrop, which in this case is simply the white wall of my studio. I'll then take my softbox and place it aiming directly at my subject with the bottom of the modifier lined up near the middle of my back. I then take a reflector and place it in between myself and my subject. A common question I get when people see this setup is, how is the subject being lit when I'm standing in front of the softbox? The answer to this is that when you're using a large modifier like the one that I'm demonstrating here, the light actually wraps around me and my subject to cast a beautiful flat light that gives skin a fresh, clean look. The reflector helps to create an additional element of interest in the eyes that really draws viewers in. This setup produces some gorgeous light that you'll oftentimes see in commercially lit portraits and ad campaigns for major brands. Let's take a look at the results.
Before we continue with the rest of these setups, I want to take a moment to say thank you to the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. If you're looking to improve in the areas of writing, photography, film and video, uh, graphic design, and more, you'll want to take the time to dive into more than 25,000 classes available on their platform. I've personally used them to help develop my own skills as they offer classes from some of the best instructors and minds in the world. The best part is that you're able to access their entire library for less than $10 a month. Before you make this commitment though, I'm hooking you up with a two month free trial so you can see everything that they have to offer. Check out the link in the description to get your free trial and join more than 7 million creators, including me, who are learning new things every day with Skillshare. For our next setup, I'll show you a way that I use a softbox that really comes in handy for many of my portrait shoots. You saw in the last setup that I used a reflector positioned in front and below the subject to add beautiful catch lights to the eyes. While the setup is affordable and easy to use, there are times where the reflector doesn't give you the right amount of fill. It'll either give you too much or too little light. So how do we fix that? It's super easy. Take a small softbox like this two x three softbox and place it in a similar position to where you'd normally have a reflector. Since you're using a light, you'll be able to dial the power of your fill light up or down to give you just enough light to fill in the shadows on your subject's face and clothing perfectly. Let's take a look at the results. For our fourth setup, we're going to use our softbox to help us create some separation from our subject and background. To do this, we'll position our 2x3 softbox slightly behind our subject and aim it towards their back. We'll power this light so that it's a little bit brighter than our main light by maybe one or two stops of light. I've only got one of these, but if you wanted to add even more separation, you could do the same thing on the opposite side behind your subject to add another separation light and even have one above and behind to really highlight your subject apart from whatever background you're using. For my taste, I think the single hair light works really well. Here's what we get using the softbox as a hair light. For our final setup, we'll take two softboxes and place them directly in front of our subject. You'll preferably want to use two softboxes of the same size, but for this demonstration, I'll just show you using the 2x3 and the 3x4 sizes that I have at my disposal. Take each softbox and place them in front of you facing your subject, and then push them apart to allow you some room to stand in between them to take your shots. I typically start with both lights at the same power, but at times you'll want to adjust the power up or down to flatter the person that you're specifically photographing. Experiment with having your subject standing two to three feet away from both softboxes until you get the light looking good. Here are the results using only two lights, along with some examples where I bring in a third light that's modified by an umbrella to add a hair light to separate her from the background. It's important to note that the power to dial in for each light in all of these setups is going to vary based on a variety of factors, including where you're shooting, the amount of ambient light that's available in the room, and the size of the modifiers that you're using. Which of these setups produced your favorite results? Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to dig deeper and learn more portrait photography skills, be sure to subscribe and check out the videos here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.